Welcome to Mystics MMOs. I'm your host, Mystic Raven. What's up, guys? Hope you're all having a very, very good day today. Um, crazy. A lot of things are crazy for me. But I'm going to be doing uh, dailies because um, I need to level stuff. Stuff and stuff and more stuff. All right. So I have been working on my Dragoon. That's... Um, you know, I'm trying to get him up to 60, and I'm also trying to get my white mage um, finalized as well. So I have a lot of different things to be doing. I'm trying to get him up to 70, trying to get my support um, jobs as fast as possible before Shadowbringers uh, release. So there are a lot of things on my plate right now um tons plus my paladin i'll probably take uh, my paladin into the leveling scenario I, or you know i can start maybe doing my rogue i need to get my rogue up to um 30 so i can make him into a ninja definitely that would help so i don't know if i want to um i'll probably do my normal raid because since i'm not 60 yet i do have limitations with what content my dragoon can access because at level 60 things open up especially with your you know uh, progression as far as your normal raids go um and then alliance raids so alliance raids is good for my dragoon as well as the 50 to 60 dungeons and then i can also do trials and things like that main scenario all of those come in handy but leveling is something i typically don't want to waste that on i want to take my lower level tunes and utilize the leveling system and the perks of that uh, same thing with the expert in level 70 it's good to get your tokens uh, for gear progression if you're worried about trying to progress you can take a level 70 so in this game you don't have to play every job like i do you can pick and choose what kind of role you want to play now i make the recommendation of having at least some accessibility so say you want to play your main as a dps that's fine but i do suggest you having maybe a healer or a tank you don't have to have both but one of the two to do what have something in between time because a lot of times players who just only do one job become um bored really fast they get through the msq they get through a lot of content and then guess what ends up happening they're like oh what do i do now well in Final Fantasy 14, you have a ton of different jobs that you could be leveling. What's up, Roz? What's up? Hope you're doing well. So there are a lot of jobs that you could, you know, continue to level. And that, to me, is really nice because it breaks up the monotony of anything, um, specifically being a little, becoming too redundant. So that's why I'm leveling so many jobs right now. For me personally, I want to try to get my crafting up to at least close to 70 before Shadowbringers. Why? Because in the end, crafting is viable. It's not my main focus. Now for some players, crafting is their main focus. So they'll try to utilize that towards their end game because that's what their end game consists of. Because crafting has end game in Final Fantasy XIV. But for me, I am a content creator, so I'm trying to utilize as many jobs as possible to do what? Give my audience or other players what's the pros and cons of each job and how that job might appeal to them. So I'll be, when Shadowbringers launches, I'll be doing configurations and job comparisons based on role. So basically, I'll take one video and we'll do a comparison on tanks. So to see what fits your play style. If you're coming into Shadowbringers, if you're existing Final Fantasy XIV, how these comparisons, you know, these new combat features are adapted and what you might want to main, you know, for your tank job or what you might want to main for your healing job or what you might want to main for your melee DPS or what you might want to main for your range DPS. Do you want to go selfish DPS? Do you want to play more of a support role? There are a lot of options when it comes to how you play your content. So that's for me personally is why I'm planning on going through so much. I don't make that recommendation though. <laughs> you know, take one thing, take one step at a time. 
So if you have a job that you enjoy and you're not planning on changing your job with Shadowbringers, that's great. That's excellent. If you're new coming into the game, what job appeals to you and why does that appeal to you? If you're taking a look like going from Bard to Dancer. So Bard is a support DPS role in Final Fantasy XIV. But we have a new uh, support DPS class coming out with Dancer that also has range capabilities, and that's the Dancer. So for the players who already are bards, are they going to transition to become Dancers? Well, that becomes the question. We're also losing a lot of cross roll abilities, and so a lot of adaptation is going to happen for everybody. We're all going to have to adapt our, you know, our, our configurations, our macros, so on and so forth. So there's a lot of content that a lot of content creators are going to be providing in the next few months. Now, once again, I always want to make sure I have my Buffy up. Usually, if you see two tanks, the one with the that are the same, usually the one with the biggest life is going to be your main tank. Now I want to switch targets. Oh shit. Got it. That can wipe you if you don't get it down in time. Alright. Don't really need any of these. I'm just going to pass it. I don't need the styles. <coughs> I 
I will only switch to DCUO when it goes cross-platform. I think I still have my munitions. I'll probably main ice. Ice is a really good tank. It's a really strong tank. Okay. Going clear. I always take a look at my alliance raid before I queue it. So it's needing a healer. That's a pretty good boost. So I'm actually going to do it. If it was like DPS, I'd probably take it. Leveling, I'll stick to the tank. And then 50 and 60. Now, I should be almost done with that other training mission, so I should take care of that really quick. Kind of interested in seeing how the healers are going to perform afterwards. You really have taken uh, a liking to this game. I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, I, I, you know, it reminds me of the older elements of what MMOs were, right? Personally, you know, that's kind of the thing I'm enjoying is, you know, I, I have like a regimen, you know, that. You know, I'm trying to attend with and trying to unlock content. I'm not overly, like, I'm not bogged down with the older content. I'm just trying to prep myself with enough of the available content to get me, you know, set up for Shadowbringers. Because that's what I'm really looking forward to. It's like, there's a lot of content to be, you know, covered. And... The, how each job performs, it's amazing. That's, I think that's why I'm enjoying myself so much. I think one of the things that keeps me interested in the game is I'm not restricting myself to one specific element. I, I find that this is a good game for casual play for most gamers. Like for a gamer who wants to just put in, you know, a, um, a total of 10 hours a week or 12 hours a week, they don't have to be overwhelmed with this game because once you complete the MSQ, you you only need one or two jobs, combat jobs, and it's sufficient. And you can still level your crafting as you want to on your own time. You don't have to be at a specific point in this game. It all depends about your availability. And that's what MMO should be focused on. It should be focused on the amount of content and the availability each player has to play the game. Uh, I feel like some things are drawn out in this game that I wish that a couple things would be more streamlined for optimization purposes. But when it comes to content, it's really is more. It has accessibility, and there are a lot of games out there that have that. But like. A game like Black Desert, the only reason I had to give up Black Desert, because it was so repetitive. It was so grindy. I loved the combat, but it was so unaccessible to the average player. And it was like, great, you know, Black Desert is an awesome game. If you don't have a life, if you don't have a life, it's a great game. But if you have any form of a life, meaning you got a family, you have responsibilities to attend to, it's not a game that's practical. And in an MMO, like, I couldn't imagine, like, playing vanilla EQ, you know? And then, like, you have vanilla WoW coming back. You have classic WoW coming back. And everybody's all pumped. And I'm like, are you serious? Do you know how, do you remember how much time it took to play through classic WoW? I mean, this is not very accessible. It's just not practical for the average person. 
that's the great thing about Final Fantasy XIV, right? And I think that's why I'm enjoying my time because it's like it's not – it doesn't feel, you know, overwhelming to, for each player. It's like for me as a content creator, I can pour more hours into leveling up my other jobs and putting more into like some content and barreling through – some of the things that most players would probably find difficult, but it it has a it has a steady pace to it for the players who just want what to either enjoy a story, to enjoy you know a dungeon crawl, to enjoy your crafting system, to get with styling, uh, mini games. It's like there's a lot of little things that I can understand why so many players continue to play this game. It's like. If you have a life, you can't afford to sink six hours in a raid. I ain't got six hours to raid. You know, I, I here's my, like, majority of the time, I'd probably say 70% of my game time, I stream. The other time, I got shit to do. You know, I got things I have to do in life. And it's like, so 70% of the time that I'm playing, everybody watches. Or I'm accessible to watch, I should say. But it's like... Who has that time to put six hours into rating? Not I. Not anymore. I, there's no way I could go do that anymore. There's no way. You like Trove? Trove's good. I, I mean, I, it's not my cup of tea, but for what it is, it's a good game. And, you know, I don't know how Gamico is going to, you know, progress, how they're going to work on progression for their games that they've acquired through Tryon, but hopefully they continue to do so. But yeah, uh, that's, I think that's why I'm enjoying it. Really good mechanics. First off, some things graphically I'm not... Like when I come into a, how, uh, you know, these areas, I see really good detail, right? Wooden floors. Like if I, put a, if I set it up, I trimmed down the graphics a little bit. Because um, I didn't like the special effects. I was trying to like take some of the glare out of the effects. I don't really know if it really has helped. But, like, when I have it all on, like, ultra-high settings, like, there are so many details in the graphics. And then there's, like, environmental detailing I'm not impressed with. It's, like, I love the dungeon mechanics. I love the monsters. I love the CGI. But then there's environmental things I'm, like, I wish they would have worked a little. I'm like, because you see all these beautiful graphics. And then you see something that looks kind of like it was just placed there. And I'm like, ah, ah. So, and given the fact that the game's 10 years old and it still looks this amazing graphically, stunning. Just fucking stunning. So I'm really happy with the graphics, the, you know, the quality of the performance. I, that's why I came here, performance. I wanted a MMO that had traditional RPG elements with performance. Now, I do like more sandbox games, but I really wanted a quality game. That's all I was asking for. I wanted an up, uh, you know, a game that kept up with its content with easy accessibility, good performance, and you know, what I would like to call traditional RPG elements. And I got that with this game. I got it all. It's everything I, I wanted in my game that I wanted to play. If had, um, I'll be honest, and I keep saying this, had Elder Scrolls performance been on par with a game like this, I probably would have never left Elder Scrolls. Unfortunately, though, because the content was fine, you know, they could work a little bit more on certain elements that I won't get into, but um, performance was the main reason I left. It was just like, I can't, I cannot pay for this quality anymore. I hear Gunbreaker will be insane. I imagine. I imagine, Herc. But, uh, yeah. With the, ki with the kit, I'm looking forward to seeing how it well works with the kit. I'm, I'm, willi I'm really looking forward to seeing how the new jobs are going to be implemented, all of them. I'm going to be a very busy person during early access. So, new uh, configurations, new videos for configurations... All of these things is my my um, future with Shadowbringer. This is going to keep me busy. So I'm going to be editing, doing post-production, um, doing tutorial videos, 
all of the, these things. It's going to keep me pretty, um, pretty tied up. So it's like people are like, well, your, your, your numbers are down. I'm like, well, my watch time's up, but some numbers are down. So to me, that's irrelevant. I'm like, I'm prepping for the future, you know, of my content. And I think Shadowbringers is the game in 2019 to be contend with. So I felt like the move for me from one game to another, this was perfect timing to, be, to get invested in a game, to take the time to, you know, build up these other jobs, to get familiar with the, the current content, moving forward to the new content. So as a content creator, it's like, you know, you don't want to... One thing I don't like about certain content creators is they overview the game, but they don't really play the game much. And then they do a lot of disserv they do a lot of disservice and dis and uh, not proper, uh, you know, um, reflection of what's going on in game. I have a food booth up, but I'll still eat another one because I just don't want it to lapse towards the end of the the raid. I love the special effects, but like for example here. The pillars here look really good. They look clean, right? But in the crystal coloring, it like look at the uh, the Ourobora, right? The Ourobora lights, amazing. But then I see the mountainside, and I'm like, this kind of looks a little generic. Steps look good, tiles look good, everything looks good. The building structures look good, and then I see like some generic groundwork. I'm like, how? How? I know, I'm being overly critical. Out of that. I can't believe they're getting rid of like instant reses for some of the jobs though. I'm a little worried about that with swift cast being gone. Oh, boy. Now I'm usually always standing on like one of these little stupid things. So I don't have to move much. So there's white. So red's going to have to be my next one. Knowing that, I'm going to come over here to this one next. Get out of that little ground effect. Now, I don't deal a lot of DPS as a healer, so what I just do is just dot them. Then I go back to my, um, 
my duty. I'm gonna stay here, like I said, red is the big thing. I'm gonna turn around real quick. Get him in a minute. I'm on red, that's perfect. AoE heal again. Out of the ground effect. Hopefully the other dude gets him up, because I just wasted my res. Or not. Oh, no, 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 no. Get on that. Okay, I need to get on white here, so I need to move. Same thing, I'm just gonna go ahead and dot it up. I'm on the white, that looks good. Gonna stay over here for the red. Okay, see if my swift cast is up. Ah, oh, I got duped! No fucking, what the hell? Oh, final hourglass. Go figure. Thank you. I was about to say, no way I got doomed. There was no way in hell that that happened. Oh shit, I'm dead. I was just getting ready to move too. Whatever. I should have stayed away from the crowd. Fucking A. That'll teach me. Here's a piece of advice. You see a bunch of people as a healer? Get the fuck away. Don't do what I just did. It's usually a bad sign. I wish this game was free to play and pay for content. No way. I don't. I'm actually glad it isn't. I wouldn't, I, I'm done with a lot of free-to-play games. Why? Here's the, the thing. Quality of content. I'm getting a lot better quality of content for the sub. And I do. And every, they have so many updates, content updates every two to three months. I don't, I'm not having to buy a DLC. I'm paying for the content ahead of time. So I'm getting the content as it's releasing. I don't have to pay 30 or 40 bucks, right? I don't have to pay that. It's, I'm getting the content. So I, and I'm getting a better form of content. So I'm actually glad it is sub, sub based. There's not a lot of games that can maintain it, and I'm glad that this is one of them. Sometimes you, you know, there's that old saying, Roz, you get what you pay for, and sometimes you, you know, you don't. You, what what you're not getting is because you're not paying for it. Just remember, everybody in the real world has to make money. Everything costs money.
Okay, we got enough regen going down. Oh boy. Once again, I'm not trying to focus on any DPS. I'm just trying to dot because that's not my job. My job is definitely healing. I'm going to throw one AOE, let the regens do its job. Okay, now I'm going to throw the shield on my tank. The thing about uh, White Mage is... Um, Reserving uh, resources is letting the regen do its job. It's hot. Every direct heal, you're basically, you know, well, not a, every, but a, there's a lot of hots. You can see them firing off on my screen. So when I throw the direct heal, it's going to apply regen to everybody, and that's a hot. And like, no, see, that's that's why I don't. That's why I don't like it. But like, see, it, initially DC was a, a sub base. But because of the competition, it couldn't sustain the business model. So I had to go to free to play and, and, and worry more about microtransactions. And I and there's there's always ads in those games, right? To promote microtransactions. In this game I never get an ad, ever. We have it, but it's not focused, you know? It doesn't have to worry about making its business model that. So that's why I said I'm actually, I'm really happy with the business model. Once again, throw one AOE heal, or maybe two. Uh oh, that could be bad. That could be really friggin' bad. No, 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 no. Give me just. Got him. Ugh. Got one and couldn't get the other. Sorry. You're different. I put more people than myself into consideration when it comes to those these MMOs. Yeah, see. 
Yeah, no, no, I get it. Yeah, no, I, I, no, I agree. Everybody's different. I'm just saying why I appreciate the business model, the sub base, because it's like, Mike, the thing about it is here, here's the way I look at it. I could do the free to, the free to, the free to play game or buy to play. So, um, there's a, both free, both like DCUL and ESO both have sub bases but it's not required. But the problem of it is they have to make their money what? Through microtransactions. And the problem for me is, you know, what's the quality of content I'm getting, you know? That's what I'm saying. It's just like, hey, man, I, I've, I've got to pay for this later on, either, it, you know, on the back end or the front end. And if they're not making the money that's justified, I might get hosed in that, you know? That might end up hurting me. Why is our tank not over here? Look, I'm going to drop. That's a nice little trick, too. When you get targeted, just drop. Oh, there it is. I don't know where our tank was, but we just did that without the tank. Ugh. Not a lot of time I'm going to get to do a little bit of damage. I re really do want to reserve and watch most of this fight. I will throw in a little bit of damage. Dot is the biggest one for me. Keeping the regen up on the tank. That's a good one as well. Our team should be on, I want to say, ads. So A for ads, B for belly. Anytime, here's another piece of advice. Anytime you see one of your team members' life start sinking, just throw that easy little regen, man. Watch out for the tail and the head. I'm gonna throw a heal on myself. Another regen on the tank. Throw a regen on myself as well. No, 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 no. Damn it. I knew it.
There we go. He's way out there. I don't know if I can get him. Damn it. God dang. I'm trying to move to the sides, man. Getting the tank. It's my main concern. Try to get some reses going. No, oh, you're not supposed to be the main tank, dude. You're killing me. Really, honestly. You're killing me. We aren't that team. Get up. We're going to wipe everything, man. Everybody's dying. Oh, my God. A wipe? Really? God. My ice DPS is going to be a freeze lock where I constantly freeze you in place. Nice. I don't like the PvP in um, the game in um, DC. It, it, it has some issues. A lot of problems this last round, man. I don't know what the hell was the the dilly, but a lot of issues, man. Oh, my daughter. Well, now she can wait. <coughs> I tried to call her right before this. If she calls me back to back, I'm going <coughs> to... What the hell, B team? I think we're gonna do a little bit of DPS while he's chained.
And another thing, DPS, if you're noticing you're taking a lot of damage, back up a little bit. We got it this time. Same thing, I just want to keep that nice little regen down. So much easier when everybody's doing their job. Let the hot fly. I'll be playing Trove for a long while, nice. At least until DCUO co goes platform. Yeah, it'll be a while before DC actually fully integrates. And at least they've made that investment, which is smart. Well, that was great. Somebody opened up with a one bar. That was just actually dumb. Get the fuck away from us. Oh, shit. Oh shit, somebody's gonna get us killed. We got noobs. Person with a friggin' target on their head is just like, oh, you know what? It's fine. We don't care. Now, here's the piece of advice I always like stay in and then look where she's going. There it is. Why? Well, I, I was out of the way. Bullshit. Always want to get under these. Come on, deeps. AOE heal again. Section, section off. Oh 
Got our AOE heal. Right there it is, on the side. Ready for the mouth blast. Gonna go to the farthest one in the back. Boom. <coughs> nice. Player accommodation. I'm gonna give it up to. I think the bar did really good. I mean. I could pass on everything else. At least uh, until uh, shoot, yeah, we can see each other then. Yeah, I mean, and you know, um, I still play the game from time to time. So, and I like DC Combat. I mean, I really do. Still to this day, one of my favorite combat systems, hands down. To this day, there are a lot of things about that game I still enjoy. They have a good staff. They're, they're fortunate. Out of all the games that uh, Daybreak, you know, acquired after SOE, and fuck John Smeedley and fucking a couple of the other assholes that are still in the industry now, one of them running fucking Blizzard. I don't know how in the fuck that goes down. One second. All right. All righty then. All righty then. So. Looks good. We're going to clear that. I'm always looking at my trials too. So I'm going to switch my job really quick. Once again, I'm trying to get this dude up to 60 this week. Eleven minutes. Oh. Oi! Oi! Yeah, I look for E3 to be like huge. Microsoft's gonna be pushing big on E3. Square Enix, as I feel, is gonna have a good E3 um, you know presence this year i think bethesda's got a lot of fucking issues on their plate rage 2's not doing so well piss poor management to be honest with you as far as like promoting the game and end game you know um i don't feel like i haven't played it i don't feel game a game could be really good or really bad, but how it's publicly received becomes the important factor of determining its success and its longevity in the market. And how you're going to incorporate, right, your, your you know, product is going to determine 
future products, obviously. You need to make money to invest in future sequels or other projects moving forward. And it's an unfortunate uh, cause and effect that Bethesda is now facing. So it's uh, finally have tied up its, you know, a Redfall, um, you know, problems with the title. Because of a book series by an author that's titled Redfall. So, Bethesda's hope is literally E6. Outer Scroll 6. And I don't think E6 is going to be... If they... They're using the create the creator engine. And if it has ha even half. Let's say half. The problems that Fallout 76 had. They're not allowed to fuck up Elder Scrolls 6. They're not allowed to now. And if it has half the problems. A, half, a quarter of. Let's say a quarter of the problems. That Fallout 76 has. Bethesda's future looks bleak as fuck. And Zenimax now. Has to take all of that into consideration. Because Bethesda. I mean Zenimax. Is Bethesda's publisher. So it's got problems man. They're like Zenimax is secure. Moving forward. They're hiring software engineers. They're developing a new engine. For a new MMO title. You know they're going to be probably. At least pu publishing. A couple more games in the near future. Not associated with Bethesda. And now with Bethesda. They're, the people are like well they're owned. Well it's a subsidiary. It has its that their own Bethesda might not go anywhere but they could be heavily reduced a lot I mean Elder Scrolls 6 could literally determine what Bethesda does moving forward and that's a problem that's a huge problem a lot of people are going to be banking a lot of on E6 and depending on what they're... And I, I've said this before. Get the fuck away from that engine. Get the fuck away from that engine, man. That engine is a disaster. Waiting to bury a lot of staff members who are innocent in the decision-making process. Why? Because the fucking execs think they know what's best. And they're going to literally sink people's careers. If E6 fucks up. It's a piss poor decision. And I hope they clean up the code. Enough. Where it's not. It doesn't get as much ridicule. Because if it gets any fucking negative ridicule. The way things have been going. A lot of people are going to get burned on the back end. Who don't necessarily deserve it. So. Just going to say that for the record. It's going to be bad. So I don't think Bethesda is going to have a good E3 presence. They're banking everything on E6. And I think because of that, it's going to look piss fucking poor. They're trying to rush this out. I think they're trying to get a 2019 winter release, given the fact of its anniversary. If they push that thing too soon, though, it's going to be a blow up in their faces. Um, Activision EA, they're in a bad situation this year as well. So I don't look for them. A classic World of Warcraft, their their bank this year. It's it's the only thing that's going to be holding them up. Um, I don't look for Fallout. Um, or not Fallout. I mean, I don't look for um, Diablo Immortal to do well in the States or European. But the Chinese market might be enough to saturate. Um, with an oversaturated um, MOBO presence in the Chinese Market, I don't know if Diablo Immortal will be enough to guarantee their success. But at the same time, if it does well, at least it'll give them enough momentum pushing into 2020. So, now also we got to take a look at in the consideration if I don't queue within like next two minutes, I'm going to call the stream. Because I do got to get going. Um, there's just so many things going on in the industry. 
And I've said this. I've I pointed this out multiple times. And NC Soft. So we have a new MMO coming out next year for NC Soft. NC Soft is putting a lot of effort into this new game. And it probably is going to be a very good product for NCSoft. NCSoft does very well with their graphics and with their content. And they know how to make a game. <clears throat> Excuse me. My problem of it is, is if NCSoft hasn't adapted to business del um, platform delivery, meaning if they've put all their eggs in one basket with the PC model, that's going to literally fuck NCSoft. It's prominent, you know, reemergence in the MMO market. Um, so NCSoft had better taken that into consideration. Because um, if they didn't, it's going to fucking hurt them. They better have follow-up announcements um, with their new MMO. Meaning they better have a PC launch plan followed up with console launches because if they don't they're fucked they're fucked they just fuck themselves and we'll see man and that's another thing there's game like i said in the earlier stream there are a lot of game companies who have not learned their lessons man or the lessons from their com their competitors and it's piss poor business des decisions that's like in the, this market, it's all about adaptation and, and business model choices, selections, and delivery. And I'll be honest, man, there are, are a lot of concerns that I have for established companies that we've relied on in the past dropping the ball. And we're going to see a lot more indie type models coming up. In the next two years. I think indie development in the next two to three years is going to be prominent. It's going to literally take the market. Push the publishers off to the side. Publishment, publishing is not going to be the middle. They're, everything's been filtered through the middleman. And the Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo are now more receptive to indie developers. Why? Because they're maintaining their price point. They're making money regardless. So the contract negotiations doesn't is more prominent in favor for the companies to support indie development. What's that do to the publisher? The poor publishers left on the fucking curb. Because they didn't want to give the money initially. So the more games that are accessible, the more the, the players have choices. But the companies are still making money. So all they're doing is cutting out the middleman. Everybody's making money except publishers. Publishers in the next, you know, three to five years are fucked. So unless the publishers are self-sustaining their own product, products and services and games, they're fucked in the future. So adaptation becomes eminent. And I honestly, honestly think that triple-a companies in the next two to three years a lot of them are going to fall off where we're going to see a you know an atari problem so we're going to see atari problems and what i mean by atari problems was atari was once the dominant force in the industry back in the uh late 70s early 80s atari was without rival and unfortunately, Atari made some piss poor decisions with, with its lineup. And then what ended up happening is the adaptation. They, were, they, they weren't pushing, they weren't innovative enough to keep up. So all of a sudden, when you saw the first Sega console come out, not Genesis, Sega. And then you saw Nintendo come out, right? Atari could not keep up with that product right nintendo used to be a gaming development company for atari that's where it, nintendo started nintendo started off with software and adapted to hardware same thing with microsoft started off start software adapted to hardware and the industry has always seen the companies that could not keep up with innovation 
fell, fell on their faces. And Atari was one of these companies. Just put a lot of eggs in one basket, bank too much on their, their past success, and that's what's going to happen with the AAA industry coming up in the next three years. So, and the publishers who's always banked on the current business model and not having to pay the repercussions of what? Legal decisions now that are going to be enforced from Senate um, is going to rear its ugly head on the industry. So how the gaming industry is going to develop within the next five years is crucial. So I'm actually not going to have time to uh, do this uh, run, so I'll do that later. I'm going to end it off with this. Just... Yeah, I've been doing this a long time. I've been, you know, gaming for all my life. I've also kept up. I took, you know, business classes and studied economics. And uh, I also am familiar with a lot of these companies because I, you know, used to do things for these companies um, in the past. Um, so we'll see. I mean, maybe I always tell people, maybe I'm wrong. I doubt it, but maybe I am. And I always say accessibility in services is going to be the future. It's coming out that way. And we'll see, man. We'll see. We'll all see, man. And for all the dumbasses in the world who are fucking leechy, leechers and the supposed businessmen who have no fucking clue and are fucking just riding everybody's coattail, here's my advice to fucking companies. You know that asshole that's sitting in that office who has people doing he just delegates the work get rid of him trim the fucking fat while you're at it right now is the time to trim the fucking fat start off with the fucking the big boys who really don't do shit except sit in their cushy fucking office and then you know pointing fingers because i'll tell you what part of the problem is there you know problem part of your problem is there trim line your fucking shit streamline it Get it fucking clean, man. Because if you can't adapt and you're paying all this money in overhead when you should be, you know, worried about future, you know, producti productivity, it's not those people who are what? Doing anything productive, right? You can streamline a lot of that shit. So there you guys have it. My food for thought, man. Whatever. You know, get rid of the fucking shit. Rift needs to be on console. Rift will not adapt to a console. Gamico is a, a game a company that manages the games it acquisitions. The, the games that it acquires, it manages. So they, they produce content based on what? The populace, right? Or the revenue generated. They're not going to take an L for anything. That's not what Gamico does. And for them to invest into a cross-platform um into their current market besides Trove. Now, keep in mind, Trove was uh, integrated prior to Gamico's acquisition, but it's not going, they're not going to invest into restructuring any of the current games that was under try on, except maybe adding content as justified by the populace. That's just the way Gamico works. So it's not an investment company. Yeah, definitely, Roz. It was great talking to you, brother. But yeah, it's definitely not a company that invests money for foreseeable future productivity. It, it, it's not a company that does that. So it's just it's trying to milk what it can for what it what it's purchased. So they purchased the game, they purchased the company, they purchased its games, and they're going to profit as much as they can from the initial purchase, not invest. So, yeah, it's unfortunate, but it's true. Anyways, man, I'm going to let you guys go. Once again, Ross, thank you. Thank you, Warren, for stopping in. As always, I want to thank you all every day. I appreciate it. I'm Mystic Raven. This is Mystic's MMOs, as always. Thank you. Have a nice day.